Prepare to drool or have some snacks on standby because in this video I'm talking about places to eat in Budapest. I've already made a video trying Hungarian foods and Hungarian Christmas foods, so I'll link those videos as well if you're interested. The cuisine in Budapest really agreed with me, well, with one exception, which I'll talk about more later. The food is simple, but very, very flavorful, two things I love. From food trucks to cafeteria style to the most expensive coffee I think I've ever seen, I want to give you a sense of what I ate in Budapest and an idea of how much it costs, because it varies a lot depending on where you go. I'm going to start with my favorite place, which Mark and I actually found in the most rewarding way, by accident. There is nothing so satisfying as stumbling across a place you didn't know existed at the precise moment you're hungry. I just feel like that feeling of discovery enhances the whole experience somehow. And for us, this was on the upper floor of the Budapest Market Hall. The market was closing just as hangar was setting in, so we wandered upstairs and were delighted to find a restaurant called Fakanal Etrem. Hope I'm saying that correctly or close. <laughs> they were close to closing as well, but they kindly let us scoot inside. And it's cafeteria style, so you take a tray and move along the line. The atmosphere is laid back and cozy, and any place with red and white checkered tablecloths is fine by me. We had goulash, which by the way is the number one thing I'd say you should try eating in Budapest because it's very traditional and extremely delicious. It looks deceptively simple, but it's absolutely bursting with flavor. It was served in these adorable red enamel pots with lids to keep it hot. And I was so charmed by these little pots that I actually looked around for them afterward because I love them so much and I was hoping to bring some home to kind of recreate that memory, but I didn't find them in the end. We also shared a plate of two other typical Hungarian dishes, one of which was basically dumplings with cheese, and this other dish which unfortunately I cannot for the life of me remember the name of, but they were both delicious. If you happen to know the names of these, please leave a comment and remind me. Mark loved it so much he did a happy little jig in his chair. The next place I want to show you is called Café Gerbeau, which opened in 1858 and it's centrally located right downtown. The interior has a grand feeling which reminded me a little bit of certain Viennese coffee houses. They are sparkling chandeliers, arched ceilings, and wood details. They offer a lot of scrumptious looking desserts which are all on display and catch your eye immediately when you walk in the front door. I had big plans to go here for a slice of cake and the treat they are most well known for, Gerbeau coffee. The description of this coffee reads like poetry, so let me tell you. Ready? Black coffee with apricot sauce, apricot liqueur, hot chocolate, vanilla foam, and walnut sprinkles. Doesn't that sound so unique and delicious? I thought so anyway, until I saw the price on the menu. 2,390 Hungarian forints for one Gerbeau coffee. That's about $11.50 Canadian or 9 US dollars for a cup of coffee. And a slice of cake was around 13 Canadian or 10 US, and Mark and I honestly just couldn't bring ourselves to spend $50 Canadian on coffee and cake, which is what it would have cost for both of us. Don't get me wrong, I am all for treating yourself sometimes, but this just was not the time for me. If you've been there and tried the Gerbeau coffee, please comment and tell me what I missed. But I have to say, if you're in Budapest and you want to go visit a more lavish sort of place, I'd recommend the New York Cafe. It's located inside the beautiful Boscolo Budapest Hotel, which is worth seeing in itself. It was built as the Budapest head office for the New York Life Insurance Company in 1894, and the New York Cafe has been open since the same year. It's long been a gathering place for writers and editors. In fact, word is that the most influential newspapers were edited right there up in the gallery. Stop and read the tabletops to learn more about the history of some of the cafe's most notable patrons. The interior is Renaissance style and there are high painted ceilings, chandeliers, an ornate gold clock, and plush red velvet covering the chairs and contouring the banisters. My favorite though are the marbled looking columns that twist up from the floor like oversized corkscrews. There are details everywhere that you have to look closely for or you could easily miss, like these little faces. We went for the architecture and history of the place, but if I were dining there, I'd want to sit at the little private balconies that overlook the space. I decided to sit down at one of the little tables for two and use my very active imagination instead. One thing I was surprised to come across in Budapest was a whole area of food trucks. For some reason, I wasn't expecting it, which made it even more exciting because if you've seen my other videos, you know that I love me a food truck. This sandwich, it might be the best sandwich I've ever had. It's 
so good. It's a little alley called Caravan Street Food and Beer Garden, which you enter off the street. There are lots of different choices to feed the hungry crowds of people there. And Budapest is by no means a paradise for plant-based eaters, but I did notice that Caravan has vegan options for between about five and seven US dollars, including vegetarian goulash, which you don't want to visit Hungary without trying. There's also pizza and pasta, a bar serving Hungarian craft beers, and a ton of burger places. Like, noticeably a lot. Budapest loves burgers. There's even an Asian food truck where the burger buns are made of rice. We went for a Hungarian specialty called langos, which is essentially deep fried bread, and they generally cost between three and four US dollars. You get a base of either sour cream or sheep cheese, and then you can choose different savory toppings like more cheese, salad, or grilled paprika. Langos are to Budapest what crepes are to Paris. There's a nice area at the back of the food truck alley with tables and lanterns, so we sat there to eat our sour cream and cheese langos. It's a bit messy to eat, but I mean, what's not to love about deep fried bread with cream and cheese on top of it? Is there enough sour cream on there for you? No. Who else loves sour cream? I'm asking because Mark doesn't like it, but even despite that, he still enjoyed this. Can you handle the sour cream? Or is it gross to you? There's not a lot of it, so it's okay. You can stomach it. Yeah. For dessert, there's Hungarian strudel for less than two US dollars, or another sweet treat that you really have to try, which in English is called chimney cake, and I believe the Hungarian name is Kurtos Kalax. Hope I'm saying that close to properly. And in Slovakia was called Tradelnik. That's my best, Tradelnik. <laughs> so leave me a comment, tell me how it did. Anyway, they're funnels of bread turned over a flame and then smothered with different coatings like sugar, cinnamon, or nuts. The ones at Caravan were about five US dollars, which trust me is well worth it. But back to burgers for a second, which I'm sure nobody minds, a little more burger talk. One of the food trucks at Caravan is Zing Burger, which a local recommended to us. But we didn't try the food truck location, we went to a bricks and mortar location on a very late night out. We figured if this is supposed to be the best burger in a city that adores burgers, then we should definitely give it a try. I really like the overall aesthetic of the brand. The menu includes things like the Hungry Hipster Burger and the Guitar Hero Burger, plus sandwiches like grilled cheese which costs between around four to seven US dollars. It all comes served on individual silver trays, and I couldn't resist drinking a cheeky cherry Dr. Pepper for nostalgia's sake. Who else is a sucker for a cherry-flavored cola? The burger was pretty greasy, so I used Mark's trick of wrapping the paper around it. After one bite though, I saw it was really pink inside. And at first, I thought there was something wrong with it, and I was kind of weirdly looking at other people's burgers, trying to see if theirs was also pink or if mine was maybe undercooked or something. But then Mark bit into his, and it was exactly the same shade of pink. And I realized this is purely a matter of taste, but it was just too raw for me personally, and I didn't eat any more of it. Okay, so it's just as pink. <laughs> I'd love to hear from anyone who knows though, is that the popular way to serve burgers in Budapest or in Hungary in general, or is that just a signature burger at Zingburger? There was an Italian restaurant quite close to our Airbnb that we went to more than once because it was so convenient. I did an apartment tour of that place, by the way, which was incredible for only 33 US dollars a night, so I'll link that video too. Anyway, the restaurant is called Belozzo, and I love the cheerful vibe in there. Subway tiles, a bar area to sit at, and a larger back area with tables. When you order, you get a number, and then you can sit and relax until a big screen tells you your food is ready. More fun, though, is to watch your food being prepared and plated. We were really impressed that you could get a large spaghetti carbonara that really hit the spot for six US dollars. And this is, uh, it's not metal. Really? Carbonara has got to be one of my favorite comfort foods, so this was a definite winner. Another time, we shared a cheese pizza for less than four US dollars and a bowl of pesto pasta. Oh, and a bottle of sparkling water. San Benedetto. There were two people that Mark and I guessed were maybe on a first date because she came over to his side of the table to show him photos on her phone, and he had his arm on the back of her chair, hovering near her back, but never made actual contact with her back. What do you guys think? Are these two on a first date? 
This is some of what we ate in Budapest, some traditional Hungarian food and some not. If you want to see other videos in Budapest, then make sure to check out the rest of the series we made there. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I love when you leave comments, so please let me know what you thought and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching! Thank you.